In this video, you will learn how to analyze heat maps. Heat maps show you what the users have been doing on your website, where they clicked, how far they scrolled, how long they stayed, what they liked, and what irritated them. Heat maps by Plurdy are dynamic, accurate, and easy to use. Let's take a look at them. In your account, go to heat maps, clicks. First of all, choose the time range for your analysis. With heat maps, it is important to have enough user interaction data for making meaningful decisions and finding concrete patterns. So if you don't have a lot of traffic on your website, try selecting bigger time ranges to have more data. Right under the time range, you have three graphs with overall statistics on your website user engagement, specifically the total amount of clicks, session without clicks, and sessions that were only on one pages. If you see that those percentages are high, this is the first indicator that your website traffic quality might be poor and you need to investigate where it comes from. And here is the most important part. A table with a list of your website pages that start from a page with the biggest amount of clicks and heatmap data. To access the heatmap view, click on Go to Reports page. The heatmap will be open in a new tab. You will see it like a regular website page, but with the hotspots on the website elements and the Plurdy menu on the right. The spots are different in size, in size depending on the number of clicks. When you hover on these spots, you will see more detailed information about the sequence of clicks. Besides click, uh, clicks in numbers, you can also switch to some other views. The clicks in percentage view will show you the attribution of the clicks across the web page. The page will be divided into five parts and you will see what are the most engaging sections of your website. You can analyze it by looking at service percentages here. Next, you can also switch to the scroll depth report and see how far users scrolled and how much information they usually see on this page. Analyzing the scroll depth report gives you actionable strategies to improve your content structure, storytelling, and cliffhangers to keep people hooked and make them scroll more rather than bounce back. It helps you determine whether you need to include the CTA buttons in your content for maximum impressions and clicks. It helps you develop the right scroll depth percentage for pop-up triggers. Another big thing, it can help you realize whether you are showing too many categories. So when you see that users don't scroll a lot, but you have more products on the page, more information on the page, it is a sign that you better leave fewer information on the page and add pagination so users can open the next page. Besides this, if you play, place some promotional banners, discounts, certificates, testimonials on your page, like this one here, with a scroll depth analysis, you will see how many people see those materials and if it makes sense to place them in those areas or better move them to the sections with higher scroll rate. Another angle for your analysis is mouse movement report. Remember that not all of the users will be scrolling a lot because they might have a big screen and in this case they are more likely to just move a mouse and not scroll. So those two reports, the scroll apps and stain mouse, are interconnected. So with a mouse movement report, the page will also be divided into sections and you will see in which parts of the website users are moving their mouse most actively. So all of this information gives you an understanding of the user behavior on this page and uh, can answer your questions about the effectiveness of certain web elements and designs. Some of the common situations and conclusions that you can make. So first scenario is when the user don't click on the element for which you expect to see clicks. In this case, try changing the call to action, the color, moving the element higher. It often happens with different banners on the website, like this one as well. Users are not clicking on such elements because there is no button, no call to action. Second scenario is when a user does not scroll deeply on the page. In this situation, you should move the most important blocks higher on the page to ensure users see them. Or in other conclusions that can be made in this situation, the user is not scrolling because he or she immediately sees the necessary information on the first screen and there is no need to scroll. Third scenario is when the user clicks on certain elements, but there is no link, 
nothing happens when the user clicks on it. This means that this element is not intuitive and confusing. The so user is re either reading or thinking that it is possible to click there. The next step in analyzing the heat map is using the data filtering possibilities to dive deeper into the specific categories of website visitors and behaviors. To learn more about filtering options in the heat maps, go to the next video.